in the name of my ancestors. Peace forever and always, and welcome to another edition of the Realities Temple on Earth Internet Ministry. I am the host of this particular program, known here on YouTube, Daily Motion, Facebook, Vimeo, and perhaps many other places. I am the mighty, the mighty, mighty, mm, Angel Snub Nub 7, your brother, always your brother. I am definitely your brother, regardless to what you may think. Your brother, and hopefully, that depends on you, because I want to be, but hopefully, your friend, Talik Ibn Ra. Oh, man. I have been waiting to do this video for a long time, but of course, as you know, in this nation, we are suffering a severe drought situation. And it has been very, 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 very hot. But as the descendants of slaves born in America, we should be accustomed to heat. We've been in a drought what some may call a spiritual or mental drought for 400 years. We've been catching hell and we've been living in heat for 400 years. So, even though this is a physical heat, those of us who are the descendants of slaves in America, we, or this environment that we're living in, should not really affect us that much because we come from a place, our ancestors come from a place of heat. We've been living in hell for 400 years. So a little bit more addition of fire should not bother us that much. But look at this. It is time now that some of that heat that has been upon us be extinguished. And I love the examples that are coming out today and within a few months. The examples that I see inspire me greatly. And it is a wonderful thing. And it goes to show that it is your and my time to rise up out of this heat. We've been in this temperature of high extreme for too, too long. Man, aren't you tired of sweating? Aren't you tired of crying? Aren't you tired of complaining? Aren't you tired of this hell? A ladder is being brought down to us. All thing we have to do now is catch on to the rungs or the rings. It's rungs, right? And let us climb out of this hole that somebody else put us in for their benefit, let us get out of the hole and work for our benefit. And what is a benefit to us is the example shown by Brother Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam. And I want to speak on this real quick before I talk about the wonderful 13th anniversary of the House of Consciousness. All we got to talk about, the House of Consciousness. I had no intent to talk about Brother Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam and those powerful FOI. But I'm glad they made a move because both of these topics interrelate. They are inspirational and they help us, they help us 
get that fire that will help us fight this fire that we've been involuntarily placed in. Brother Louis Farrakhan ordered the powerful FOI of his organization called the Nation of Islam to stop watching TV to, to stop doing whatever they felt they wanted to do personally and let us get together put on our suits and our ties and go out in the street and talk to our people in Chicago, in LA, in Houston, New York, wherever we find our people, wherever there is a Nation of Islam temple, I want the men, the males of the FOI to go out in those streets and let us talk to our people. Because we have a serious problem of a rise in murder in our communities. Something is wrong. Why are we shooting each other? Why are we hating one another like this? Why are we targeting those who are living in the same hell that we are in? Since we all are victims, it would seem as though we all would be trying to help one another climb up out of this volcano. But instead, there are those who reach out to grab those trying to climb out and harm those who are in the same condition they are in. So, Brother Farrakhan decided not to march, but to get hands on with our people. I remember my days as an active fruit of Islam. I remember being out on the streets. Man, I loved it. It is much different than this cyber revolutionary stuff. I don't get what what's what's up with this cyber revolutionary sit on your ass behind a computer. It's a wonderful tool. Don't get me wrong. It's a wonderful tool, but I guarantee you there's nothing like going out in the street and I heard brother Sarah Sutton said he said we got to stop this pavement go out in the street and shake their hands and meet our people I remember as a fruit of Islam man I was so fired up I love being on the street with our people whether they liked us or didn't like us it was just wonderful being with black folks because we are not the criminals. We are not ghetto. We are not all these wacky things that they say that we are. Not when you talk to us face to face. We are more intelligent. We are more than these negative images and things that they try to paint us as. As a people. I'm not talking about individuals. There are individuals who are silly. There are individuals who are murderers. There are individuals who are pedophiles. There are, there are individuals who are drunkards and all these other negative images. There are those of us who suffer low IQ. But as a people, we are a beautiful people. And you could verify that more if you go out, knock on the doors, and talk to our people wherever they may be, one-on-one, -on -one, hands-on. As a FOI, not only did I soldier with the mighty FOI as a group, but I would take it upon myself to go anywhere our people were. You could find me one or two o'clock in the morning in the what used to be called the Cabrini Green Housing Project in Chicago, or I would be somewhere in Harlem, one, two, three in the morning, running around, talking to our people. You would find me by myself in a church, talking to the parishioners, talking to the reverend, the pastor, the minister. You would find me at a gang member's house, Sharing Kool-Aid, talking about different things, while the brothers 
would talk about who they shot last night. And of course, your brother was there to try to discourage that type of activity. You would find me in the bars trying to sell the Final Call newspaper. I would do this on my own because I had the fire. I wanted to see our people free. I wanted to see us in a better place. And I wanted to show the people that somebody, even if it was just one person, I wanted to show us that somebody cares. And I have cared for us. And I love us ever since I was a little boy. You know why? Because I had to learn how to love myself as a black man living in an environment where black was considered ugly, black was considered nasty, black was negative among black folks. I had to learn how to love this curly hair, these thick lips, this broad nose, these features that are related to the descendants of slaves born in America. I had to learn how to love me. And when I began to learn how to love me, that's why I learned how to love us. No matter what our condition is. No matter how arrogant. No matter how materialistic. No matter what, how, what type of bad condition or negative condition that we're in. I know what we are deep inside because somebody made black ugly. And in making black ugly, they tried to make us ugly, but that's not who and what we are. Not deep down inside. Even the toughest gangbanger. I tell you this now. From personal experience. Even the toughest gangbanger. Is not as ruthless and heartless as y'all think. If we were hands on. Like the FOI. The mighty FOI. Hey well, you want to know something. They are mighty just like the mighty mighty angel snub number seven. We got to get mighty. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad back in the day, he said, rising up, you mighty nation. You can accomplish what you will. You mighty. I'm mighty. The FOR is mighty. We are a mighty people. When I say mighty, mighty angel snub number seven, it's not just for me. It is for all of us. We are mighty and mighty, beautiful people. You have to show the people that somebody care about them. And they don't have to love you back. I don't expect the people to love me back. It was nice that really the majority of the people that I approached were really nice brothers and sisters. That goes to show if the majority, very, very few, were, you know, had these ghetto attitudes or whatever. But the majority of us if you talk to us, not talk at us, and treat each other with respect, oh man, I see I know what we are. I know who we are, and the enemy knows who we are. They trying to paint us as devils, and that's not who we are. I cannot speak for other black folks. I can't speak for these Africans or those from the Caribbean or, or wherever you may find other black people, but I can speak for so-called African Americans the descendants of slaves in America, we've never harmed nobody as a people. As individuals, we do stupid things. But as a collective, as a people, we've never come together to talk about hate or harming anybody. So y'all can take that stuff, talk about what black folks do this. No, individual Negroes, individual niggas do their thing. But we as a people are not like that. And that's just the bottom line. And that's the truth. But see, we don't know who we are ourselves. And they don't want to know who we are. Because they prefer that we are these negative, wacky images that the rap people put out. And this uh, Caucasian, racist Caucasian controlled media, what they put out. On their tell lie vision. Their Disneyland vision. Is all false. But. They don't have to love me. You don't have to love me back. 
But I'm going to love you. I remember just about two weeks ago or whatever. It might have been two weeks ago. Brother Farrakhan himself. Speaking about how people talk about his embracing of Scientology. He talks about how he is going to love us no matter how we talk. And that's, that's exactly how we have to be. Because he understands our condition. I think, Brother Farrakhan, that many people do have valid reasons or, val or bring up valid questions on that issue of Scientology, but that's your business. It is not causing me any harm. It's not causing anybody harm that I know of. We're just talking about and should be able to have civil discussion about things of this nature. You don't have to love me. But I'm going to love you. Brother Farrakhan said, You don't have to love me. But I'm going to love you. Because we understand that you are not in your right mind. We, the descendants of slaves born in America, we are not in our right mind. When the Bible talks about turning the other cheek. <laughs> When the scriptures talk about turning the other cheek, it is talking about turning the other cheek to those who are not in their right mind. So you can say, like who we are. We are an innocent people. We are victims. We are victims. We are not troublemakers. We are the descendants of victims. We suffer from post-traumatic syndrome we have been victimized so we are not in our right state of mind we have no idea we are trying out here trying to find ourselves some of us have gave up so when it talks about turning the other cheek it talks about dealing with this type of people so when I'm not going to say I'm not saying that we should excuse murder. We should excuse pedophilia or incest or theft or any of these things that black people do to black folks. What I'm saying is that we are not nowhere in our right state of mind. We are influenced by criminals. We have been in a criminal nation for 400 years influenced by criminals. We have been denied proper opportunity. We've always had to fight these obstacles. And some of us have just gave up. And so we turn to crime and we've integrated with an immoral people. They claim to be moral, but they are an immoral people. And we've taken on their immorality. So... That is why we have an infusion of unmarried females raising babies because the female has become immoral and the male is immoral. We don't have value on ourselves. We have turned from a people that was victimized into something even almost worse, so savage. Many of us realize this, but some of us don't. So we turn the other cheek to those in hopes that maybe if we continue to love them, not love those, now look, not love those who victimized us, that put us in this condition, that raped our mothers, castrated our fathers, done us dirt for over 400 years and continue. To do us dirty. And they know. That they do us dirty. I'm not talking about. Turn no other cheek. To somebody. Who view us as prey. Who exploit us. You don't turn. The cheek to devils. You don't turn the cheek. To wicked people. They are in their right state of mind. They know exactly what they're doing. But they are vampires. In order for them to live. They suck our blood. 
and you don't turn the other cheek to these demons, you got to get this beast off your back. Just like brother said, he said, you got to bang on this beast. They know what they're doing. They view us as prey. But you pray, P-R-A-Y, you pray for those like yourself because you know we are not in our right state of mind. Father, I pray for them for they know not what they do. If they knew what they were doing, they would not be murdering each other day in and day out in all the major cities and probably <clears throat> some of the small towns. <clears throat> Excuse me. Ah. Oh. There is nothing like hands on. Nothing like hands on, brothers and sisters. Talking to each other. Not just using the internet. <clears throat> the internet is sort of cold. It cannot, it's not like talking to flesh and blood in person. Some of us have tried marching. They have marched, I believe, in Houston. They have marched in, in Chicago. March. We have tried marches on this issue. Black on black crime. And it does not work. Do you know why marches don't work? Marches don't work because it is not personal. You get, a, you get a gang of people with a bunch of signs and you march to the neighborhood and when you march, march reminds us of soldiers and the purpose of a soldier is to come somewhere and conquer a place with violence, with threats. It's a threat marching is a threat of force. So your gang members and, and just ordinary citizens in the community feel as though this is a force, an occupy force. You're going to try to make me. You're going to try to force me to act and behave like you want me to. So I'm going to fight against your crap. And that's what you see. You see people that don't give a damn about you Marching through the community, holding a sign. They don't care. They are not impressed. You can't make me do nothing. Hollering and screaming, we shall overcome. And all this other stuff. You don't know me. You haven't lived my life. You don't understand nothing. Maybe if you talk to me, and you understood who I was as a man, or who I am as a woman, and what I'm going through, maybe you understand why I'm acting or why I'm, the behavior that I express is the way I express. But you don't know because you are a militant soldier. You, you've gathered your buddies together so you think you're going to come through the hood and threaten somebody with your signs and snitch into the police and, and all this other stuff. Now you make me dislike you even more. Don't you understand what I'm saying? It is really bad when we turn to white folks to solve our problem. Because really, indirectly, they are the cause of it. So we're going to call the police and the National Guard. That's not necessary when the men, when the males who claim they are, are, are men, see the, the FOI, Brother Louis Farrakhan and the mighty FOI don't have to make no claim. Their actions show that they are the protectors of the community, that they are willing to stand up for something, get off their ass, go out in the street, and talk to our lost brothers and sisters, our young men and women. Not march through their neighborhood. I mean, you can march. It's pretty. 
and it's beautiful to see, but it's not about marching against you. I'm marching. I'm, I'm here because I love you. I love us. And I'm willing to take time in order to talk with you because you are worth my time. You are worth my time. I make videos because you are worth my time. Because I love you. I love us. Marching. Shows that you fear the people. If you're not hands on. How can you help those of whom you fear? Even while you're marching. You hope somebody don't start shooting through the crowd. Because you really fear those. Now. How can you help those of whom you fear? You can't help me if you fear me. There are those who say bald eagles. The bald eagle might have an arrow through his chest or a broken wing or broken foot. If you find an eagle on the road and that eagle is injured and we are like the injured eagle we are a hurt people with broken wings how can you help the eagle if you are afraid of the eagle if you're scared of it how can we be afraid of people that look like us that have suffered like us how can you fear your babies the babies that y'all produce day in and day out. You are afraid of them. And why are they like the way they are? Our brothers and sisters, our youth, because we have not, we have not produced a legacy to hand to them. So our young people are angry at their elders because they have nothing. They can see that everything that the black community is, everything that we are, we are dependent on Caucasian people. I don't care how rich, I don't care how smart, everything, directly or indirectly, I don't care how hard you work, everything that we are in this nation, directly or indirectly, comes from Caucasian people. We are not equal. We have no say so. The white man obeys not one. Show me one law that white people obey that the descendants of slaves born in America, we created. Not one law. Not one tiny, tiny, itty bitty law. The white man, the racist Caucasian people of America don't obey not one law. They don't care nothing about us. Everything, we are a, an illusion. Everything that you think that you are in America is Disneyland. It's fictional. Your words and your actions, you don't mean nothing. Until you're stupid enough to start hurting white folks, then they'll start giving you attention. Their jails and their prisons are overcrowded, but they always... And I would bear witness personal to this. They'll always find some place to put a black face. They always overcrowded, but they always they can find a place to put us. What if the men, in fact, what if we as a people was like the mighty, mighty FOI? Going into the streets, marching. But meeting and greeting, touching and talking to our people. Not talking at our people, but talking to, talk to the little young girl who had babies when she was young. She's 23 years old and she got five babies already. Talk to the brother who has been uh, jobless for seven years. And he tried finding a job, but y'all don't want to ask you. And you always... You're always talking about this is a difficult economy. And even for black folks, 
our unemployment rate has always been high. But you always want to make excuses because, see, we make excuses when we are comfortable. But as soon as we are uncomfortable, you don't hear all that crap. When it's difficult for you to find a job, difficult for you to feed your family, difficult for you to do certain things, then you don't run your mouth. But when you have everything, when you got or when you have plenty to drink, when you have plenty of money in the bank, y'all talk a bunch of, that's why nobody don't like you all. Uh, we talk so arrogant. Just because it's good for you or, or just because you got your little crumbs don't mean I can get my crumbs the same way that you got your crumbs. Everybody can't go to college or don't want to go to college. But everybody deserves to have a little happiness in this world. And that's all gang banging and a lot of this disruptive behavior in our communities is all about, I want a little something for myself. Then you live in a materialistic society and that feeds the greed in us, making us materialistic. So I, I can't get uh, riches by so-called legal ways that I'll do it illegal. I, why should I be satisfied with some crumb? Oh yeah, I could go to jail, but I'm willing to take the risk. Then some of y'all in business, some of y'all are cheating the people. You're cheating on your taxes. You're doing some dirty stuff too. But see, but that's on the down low. It's all right for you to cheat on your taxes. It's all right for you to cheat the people, give have overpriced merchandise, have people uh, overpay for your services. That's all right. That's cheating. That's stealing. But of course, as you know, white collar crimes is put on the down low while they concentrate on the so-called blue collar crimes and the white collar crimes, the one, the crimes committed by pencil and paper is always worse, always cause worse harm than so-called blue-collar crimes. And then these white-collar criminals, a lot of them go to these beautiful jails when they get caught. But of course, as you know, most black folks commit blue-collar crimes, so they always want to push that in somebody's face. But you can always push it in their face too. Every day, some white guy is caught by them stealing and tripping and been stealing and lying for years, getting rich. But I'm not shocked because this is a criminal nation. The whole country was born on criminal activity, rape and murder, slavery, theft, lies, deceit. So what, here you are, the nation was built by feces, by urine, by filth, and you trying to clean that up. You're living in a toilet. Ain't nothing clean and have never been clean about the United States of America. I don't want to, me personally, I don't want to clean the United States of America up. Let them clean it up. Our people was forced to be here. I would rather us make and create our own toilet and we clean our own filth than somebody else's. You should be tired of cleaning toilets. We've done it for over 400 years. And this is not to degrade those of us who are in the housekeeping industry. <laughs> Y'all, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Woo. Be proud of your job. No matter what your job is. Cleaning toilets, picking up trash, whatever it is. Be good at your job. Be proud of it. Many of us have lost that passion for being prideful in our jobs. Let us be proud of whatever we do that's legal and is good. And then, if you don't like being a janitor, if you don't like 
doing some of these things, then the children that you produce, put them on a path so they don't have to do what you had to do. But somebody have to clean these toilets. Somebody have to clean, clean these sewers. Somebody got to take out the trash. Somebody got to do it. Everybody's job is special. Everybody's job is needed. As far as I'm concerned, the man that picks up the trash is just as good as the president. But see, some of us, we caught up in this, in this division garbage. Trying to put people in these categories. Oh, I don't pick up trash. So that makes you special. You ain't special. All of us, all these people who do these jobs, these nasty, filthy jobs, whatever, stop for one day. Stop for a few minutes. And let's see how all these folks with the pretty jobs, let's see how long you're going to make it. Living in your own filth. We need to stop being arrogant. Everybody has their place. Everybody has their purpose. But with that said, let us begin to talk to and not at our people. All props to Brother Minister Louis Farrakhan, the Nation of Islam, and the mighty FOI. What a wonderful example this week you have done. Now if the NAACP, if the Urban League, if all of the, the churches, if all of us so-called men, and some of you sisters too if you want to, if all of us took a hands-on, uh, a hands-on, what's the word I'm looking for? But anyway, if all of us could become hands-on and speak with our people in person, not talking about what we should do on the internet, we all we already know what we should do. Get off your ass like the mighty mighty FOI. Get off your ass like Louis Farrakhan. Get off your ass like many brothers and sisters, even those who march. Get off our ass and let us let us integrate. If you want to integrate with somebody, integrate with our people, the disfranchised, and let us stop being greedy and let us find resources and help our people. Who can't help themselves. Because apparently some of us can't help ourselves. So let us help one another. And with that said. That's a good way to end. That part of our talk. To go to the second half of our conversation. I want to speak to. Brother Sarnetta. Black News 101. I want to say and wish a happy 13th anniversary to the House of Consciousness. <clears throat> Excuse me a second. Woo! Got to get a dranky drink on. It is very hot. Even though you had an air conditioner and the fans blowing. Don't mean too much of nothing. This heat really is putting a strain on the air conditioning system. Okay. On this particular topic, we're going to say, and I would like to send shouts out to YouTube. And even though YouTube has given me and I'm pretty sure many of these brothers that are part of the House of Consciousness, you give, you give us problems. You make great difficulty in us sharing our message and our information with those who are the descendants of slaves born in America. But at the same time, see, I have to give credit where credit is due. If it was not for YouTube, I would not know anything about the House of Consciousness. I would not know anything about Brother Polite, Brother Sarasun Seti, Brother Natural Tahuti, 
Brother Sonetta, and so many others. Oh, man. You brothers and sisters of the House of Consciousness, the brothers and sisters of this black YouTube community, you have so much information. You have so much to share. You are so out. You are so going back to us as a people. I can hear the love in your heart. I can hear the concern. I can hear the caring in your heart for us as a people. So I must respect us. I must respect you because you really do care. And not only are you talking, but we are celebrating the 13th anniversary of the House of Consciousness because of your actions. And your actions have awakened so many of us who are dead in the mind, spiritually, mentally dead in the mind, those who are the descendants of slaves born in America. But YouTube gave us an outlet. YouTube gave us another tool in order to spread that message. But YouTube comes at a price. And if you're not willing to pay that price, then our people no longer hear your voice. And you two, and the racist Caucasian people, and others. I said, and others. Not only, there are dark Europeans, there are Uncle Tom's, there are Sambos. There are other so-called races of people who also don't want our people to hear the message of the House of Conscience. Or what Brother Sarah Sutton said, or Brother Polite, or myself. They don't want our people to hear what we have to say. And then... What's so hypocritical about them is that they will talk about freedom of speech in America. But yet, when those of us who are American citizens, when we begin to express our ideas, our philosophy, our opinion, and they don't like it, remember, we're not trying to talk to racist white people. I'm not trying to talk to Uncle Tons or Sambo. I'm trying to talk to those who want to listen to what I have to say. Once I begin to speak, either you listen or you don't. You don't have to listen to what I have to say. But they are so afraid of the message that comes from Angel Snup Nup Seffin, the message that comes from Sarah Sutton Seti and the Black Power Cartel or Brother Polite or Sarah, I mean, a uh, brother Sonetta or brother Natcha Tuhuti, they so fear our words and others, not just us, there are other brothers and sisters trying to get the word out, trying to get the message out. They are so afraid. Why are you afraid? But there's a price to pay to be on YouTube. The Realities Temple on Earth Ministry. I have suffered. And those who support this ministry, we have suffered over 60. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have suffered over 60 channels being terminated. Why is it so important that Angel Snub Number 7 be silenced and terminated from YouTube? You should ask yourself a question why so many why would somebody spend so much time because really it's not a and I see no evidence that it's a Google conspiracy to silence Angel Snub Nub 7 but they set up the video so the races which some of these races are their employees so they can make it easy to destroy and silence this is a way of cyber assassination, cyber lynching. They make it so it's easy for racists to silence the voices that they don't like. Make it easy for the dark Europeans, the Uncle Toms and the Sambos, to silence the voices that have come together to awaken the mind. I don't care if you never agree with anything I say. 
But my mission and my position is just to put something out there to cause you to think. And sooner or later, you're going to begin to think for yourself. Not talk about what I read in the Bible, what I read in the Quran, uh, what I read in the Torah or any of these books and and people that we listen to. I want to know what do you think? What do you know? Think for yourself. And thinking for yourself is a threat not only to racist white people, but it is a threat to some so-called black folks because they are tricksters too. They are using black power. They are using black liberation to make money off of those who simply want knowledge and understanding because they know that they are not white people. They want to return back to who we are. So you have all these deceivers in black skin looking out, trying to make money off of us. I'm not making accusations against any particular individual or organization, but we need to, when we do see brothers and sisters out here and it's very plain to see that they are just trying to make money off of us. They do need to be exposed. I'm not here to try to make money or do anything exploit us. The descendants of slaves born in America, we have been exploited. We've been deceived. We've been lied to for over 400 years. I don't need to add my voice. I don't have to add my actions to that. And I can't do it because I love you. And if I really love you, and these people claim that they love black folks, how can you cheat them? How can you exploit our people? Traitors must be dealt with. And we will deal with the dark Europeans. We're going to deal with the traitors. We're going to deal with the Benedict Arnold. It's going to be no more easy time for you. You're going to run back to your masa. Well, in fact, you won't be running back to your masa. We'll be giving you back to your masa in a pine box. Or you will wash up on the shore of some lake or river. Not going to play games with Uncle Toms and Sambos and these traders, these who are nothing but exploiters, black devils. And there are black devils. They learned it from the original devil, the skunks of the planet Earth. And they take what they know to exploit their own people. I don't want to hold us long. I just want to make a few points and send shouts out to uh, the House of Consciousness. Brother Sarnetta, Brother Ta uh, Natcha Tahuti, Brother Seti, Brother Polite, all those who are participating in the celebration of the 13th anniversary of the House of Consciousness. YouTube. And the reason why YouTube and the dark Europeans and others are upset. And they make it difficult for us to speak on YouTube is because they fear the rise of the descendants of slaves in America. In fact, if it was not for these obstacles placed in our way, the black man and woman of America, we would have been risen. In fact, with that rise, there would be talk of a separate nation because we would be too good and we'd be doing too good in America and being a mature, grown people living in America, being smart and wise, you would not want to continue to give your credit, your accomplishments, everything that you do, allow this devil, these people who have done nothing but torture us for 400 years 
Stop giving them the credit for our success and our accomplishments. Whenever you say I'm an American and whatever you do that's successful, it go it does not boost the black community. Be because if it boosted the black community, then you would see the black community would be in a much better condition. But it always go back to the racist white folks. And this occurs because we are mentally dead. We are deaf, dumb, and blind mentally. But they, our enemies, fear our rise. And the reason why everybody fears the rise of the black man because whenever something go up, something is coming down. The black man the descendants of slaves of America and those who are the descendants of these ancient African people, you have been down for a long, long time. But just like the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, we are like cream. Truth crushed to the earth will rise again. And slowly but surely, we are rising again. Because if we were not rising, there would be no 13th anniversary of the House of Conscience. There would be no realities temple on earth. Would not exist. But now the time has come for us to rise. And we are rising. And there is fear coming from up out of these other camps who are used to exploiting us. Used to sucking our blood like the vampires that they are. But now, with the rise of the Realities Temple Ministry, the rise of the House of Consciousness, the rise of the Black Power Cartel, the rise of the Hebrew Israelite Nation, the rise of the Black Moor Science Temple, the rise of the Nation of Islam, the rise of information, the rise those things that will awaken dead minds. There is fear. We got to stop. The rise, because if these Negroes rise, then somebody got to come down. And those who are at the top got to begin to fall. And you see the fall or the beginning or the process of the fall of America, the fall of Europe. And what determines the fall of Western civilization? What begins, what determines the fall of America? It's the state of the mind of, of the African American. The black people, the descendants of slaves in America, and we and the, and the people of, of blackness all over the earth. The more smarter, the more wiser, the more awakened we become, you see them begin to fall. And they know it. Truth. They are the haters of truth. They are against truth. We, our minds are awakening. We are embracing truth. And truth crushed to the earth. Rises again. We are, we are rising. It may not look like it. But we are. And it is a very much concern to our enemies and those of us who have lied and exploited us. They know who we are. They know our potential. The problem is we don't know who we are. We don't know our potential. So, mm, mm, mm. I want to bring this little talk to conclusion. I'm so proud of those who participate in this 13th anniversary celebration of the House of Consciousness. All of us who are participating in the upliftment and the awakening of a people made deaf, dumb, and blind, kidnapped, raped, castrated, discriminated, placed into hell, for over 400 years.